It is the end of season breakup day as the Flyers 22-23 season has come to an end. And joining us right now is the team's leading scorer, Travis Konechny. TK, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. Feels good to end the end the season with a three point night over a point per game. Yeah, I mean it was it was a good way uh, to end. I think for everyone, um, especially Bronner's last game there, and uh, it was just you know obviously an up and down season. So to end on a win was good for everybody. Um, you get to thir- the thirty goal plateau. You surpass it with thirty one with the two goals in the game. That's one of those things, one of those plateaus you want to check off. You were on your way in 1920. You're actually on a 31, 32 goal pace when the season got cut short. Um, but to get to over the 30 goals means something to you? Yeah, it, it's been, I think, since I hit the 24 goal marker um, in my second season, it's kind of been on my radar that I wanted to, you know, take the next step. And I just hadn't been able to get there. And, uh, you know, to be able to get there this year and, um, you know, obviously, kudos to everyone who helped me along the way this year in, in, in doing that. Um, it was definitely, you know, something that I was happy with doing. And, and now, uh, you know, reset the bar and, and just keep seeing, you know, where I could get to, whether I get to, to the new marker or not. But, uh, you know, I was glad I could hit 30. Yeah, you hit three years in a row at 24. Yeah. Um, you know, what was it? You know, when the bubble happened and maybe you lost some confidence in your scoring, I know you sat down with Danny and talked about getting into the middle of the ice more and go where the goals were scored. Was it as as simple as just making, you know, reminding yourself to go to those areas more and and get the result? Yeah, just being in good ice, I think, is the the one thing um, that we talked about and you'll see in the video is – a lot of times I would find myself on the perimeter and, and, you know, you hear it all the time being a perimeter player is never really a good thing. Yeah. Um, and when things get tough, a lot of times I would end up on the perimeter. So it was just, it's not necessarily about like being in the paint and battling and grinding in there. It's just funneling to the right areas and getting into good ice to, you know, where the puck will find you just yeah. from being in, in the right spot. So that's kind of what we talked about. And, and make yourself an <laughs> option. Yeah, exactly. By not if, remaining if you're static. you're in the corner, you're not open. So yeah. <laughs> you might feel open, but you're not. Yeah, you are. But you're not around anybody. But exactly. they're like, oh, you're going to yeah, stay there. Yeah, leave them over there. That's fine. We'll, we'll defend less people if you're going to be in the wrong spot. Yeah. Um, the confidence element of it, too. Um, you didn't have back-to-back games this season where you didn't end up on the score sheet in some way until January. So you were amazingly consistent of ending up on the score sheet, a goal and assist, multi-point games, and being able to, you know, not go two games in a row without a point is something that's got to be mental, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It was just, I kept saying it at the start of the year. It's like when the bounces are kind of going your way, you just kind of ride the wave until it ends. And um, again, like a lot of kudos to my teammates that were helping me along the way, but I, yeah, I just kind of felt like uh, I had the confidence and, um, you know, I was going into each and every game thinking that I was going to be able to change the outcome of the game uh, in some way, whether it was, you know, just working hard or an assist or a goal or whatever it was to help the team. Um, and, you know, I think it's important when in the past when you have that confidence, I could let it go. Uh, sometimes it would slip away, but just trying to, like, stay confident and and, you know, learn how to be consistent. And not overthink it, too. Yeah, exactly. You had the point streak, and, I mean, you put up huge numbers during it. Um, <clears throat> what's that feeling like every time you step on the ice, riding a heater like that? Yeah, it's uh, something I've never experienced before, I'll tell you that. At any maybe, level? Maybe in minor hockey, yeah, or yeah. junior. Um, but the NHL is obviously a different different story, and it's funny because it's, it's – as cool as it was for me to go through that, you know, look around the league and it's peanuts, like some of these guys that are just yeah. so good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's definitely a good feeling to go through something like that and have the confidence to know that, um, you know, that I was able to do that. It was definitely something that, you know, I held on to for a bit. How's the, the league changed in, in the sense of how you have to score on goalies now? <clears throat> because I mean it's evolving yeah. every year. This is the cat and dog game, cat and mice game, yep. I guess. Is, and you know the goalies adjusting, and then you guys adjusting. How's that changed? Yeah, I mean the goalies are just so good now, so big. Yeah, big. They move well. Um, y- you know, I think people would actually be quite shocked at like when you're shooting, you're not necessarily seeing 
the opening. A lot of times it might be you're you're just assuming the goalie's going to move. You know, if, if you shoot low glove, it might not be there, but when the goalie drops into his butterfly, it opens up a small little pocket that yeah. wasn't there when you originally went to shoot it, but, like, you're trying to outsmart the goalie as well. Um, and that's how a lot of goals are scored too. And, and also just kind of knowing where the net is, you're just kind of shooting at the net yeah. rebounds. You're just, it's just kind of like uh, repetition and practice. You know, you just kind of learn where the net is and, and kind of try to find the open spaces. Um, Cause yeah, like you said, a lot of times the goal is just going to be there and they move well, they're big and, and you just got to kind of hope for the best. Yeah. I always said the, the great goal scorers, you know, they read things they don't even know they're reading in the goaltender. Like if the goaltender's <laughs> loaded on his right leg to move to his left, you recognize that and, you, you know, you know that I can get him because of where he thinks I'm going. Yeah, and again, that just comes from playing a lot and, and shooting yeah. a lot of goalies. Um, and I think one thing that, that I've done a little bit over the years is talk to the goalies and kind of get their, um, you know, opinion on my tendencies where I like to shoot and, and – you know, what's tricky from their perspective. Yeah. Like what's tricky about my shot that might throw a goalie off or what do you see when I shoot here kind of thing. And, um, you know, I don't do it often, but I've definitely talked to goalies in the past about it. Yeah. Like pulling the puck into your body makes it harder to read. Yeah. I remember, uh, Elliot actually told me, um, Brian Elliot when he was here. Yeah. I always would shoot in the same spot and I won't say where, cause I'm still playing, but, uh, he always said to me that if you can score in the exact same spot in practice and practice that, even when I know I'm shooting there, like he knew I was going to do it. And you still beat him. I would still try to beat him there. And he said, that's when it's a hard shot. Yeah. If the goalie doesn't know it's coming, you know? So that stuck with me and I was like, okay. So then I would just start to work on my shot that I thought that I would score a lot. And, uh, yeah. So I, Hartsy and I kind of get a chuckle out of it because I always shoot in the same spots in practice. I mean, you have to tell me what that is when we're done recording. No, you, it's 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 a low glove shot. I was just kidding. It's I always yeah. shoot. I tend to shoot low glove. And, yeah. And it's why not low like, blocker? That's more difficult. It's for a little harder for a righty. Yeah. Just the angles where you're coming in. So, yeah. But. Um, yeah, just above 11 inches and below 16 yeah. inches is that one spot above yeah. because the pads are 11 inches. Yeah. Um, what do you got for this off season? You had a great year. I, I was so happy, by the way, that you were able to come back and finish the year. And you came back strong. You played eight games after the injury. Yeah. Four goals, three assists, seven points. Big for you to be able to come back and finish it on the ice. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. I was, um, I was trying to get back as as fast as I could. It was like kind of looking like I was running out of room there, and things started moving along pretty good for me. Um, but yeah, I was I was happy to get back and and finish it out especially when the guys have been grinding all year you know i wanted to be a part of that because it's tough when you're going through winning and then losing and then winning and losing it's just like a mental grind so i kind of wanted to be in the locker room again so um <clears throat> you were benched in that san jose game early in the season yeah and i remember talking to Torts and he said tk came to see me he goes i don't i don't hold it against guys if they don't but you wanted to go talk to him about it and yeah. it seemed like a really big pivot point for you in the season. Yeah, I was actually asked about it today in the media too. And um, it was just a big moment, I think, for me and him and our relationship. Because it's not like we had this big relationship that we communicated every single week about what was going on. Like, it wasn't anything like that. It was just like we understood each other through that meeting and like kind of where my head was at and where his was at. And we kind of laid it all out there had our conversation and uh and then kind of ever since then that was that was it we never really spoke we just kind of knew what each other expected of one another and and that's kind of how we went about it um i mean he he mentioned when you were out losing you was a huge void because not only because of you know the goals and the assists but the attention that you grab on the ice let me ask you about playing with some of the young players like in that game against uh, chicago in the first goal and the first shift of the game Great two-man game to break out of the zone with Frost, get up the ice. He delivers you a beautiful backhand pass, and you pound it. Yeah. Um, playing with the young guys, what's that been like? It's been Tip awesome. as well. Yeah, it's it's been so fun. I mean, seeing these guys, like, we all know the talent they have just from camp or summer skates or whatever, the highlight packages you see of these guys. Like, I've known they've had this. It's just, like, for them to get the opportunity, a lot of times – 
they might not get that if if we were in a different stage of you yeah. know where our team was at and some guys don't get that chance to be that player for for a little bit longer um but when they had the, the chance this year it's all about taking advantage and they all did it was yeah. it was so awesome to see um they did such a good job and and you know sh- trying to show their skills off and and you know what they're all about in their own style of play and each and every one of them did a great job. I thought one of the big elements of your game this year was your details, and it was present on your second goal in the Chicago game because the winger's waiting on a rim, and he's not moving back to the puck, and you yeah. jump it. Yeah, You were like a D-back. You jump the root, yeah. and you get the puck, and you get it to Frost, and then as soon as you get rid of the puck, you what do you do? You go right to the net, and you pick up the rebound. The details in your game were fabulous this year. Yeah, thank you. I mean – Again, that just comes down to like the little details that I was doing, uh, some of the analytic stuff, just where I would end up after I'd make a play. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the things. It was just I wasn't ever following up a play like I should have been. And um, yeah, that was, like, like you said, it was a good example of if I would have veered off or watched that play, I would never have been in that spot. Yeah, it was well executed. What's the plan for the summer? What are you doing? Uh, probably do a little vacation right away and then. Um, I mean, just spend some time uh, with my son and my wife before our next one comes. And you know, How's the boy? <clears throat> he's doing great. Yeah? How old now? He's just shy. He'll be two in August, so he's just shy of two. Um, he buzzing around with oh, a little twig already? Around. Yeah, yeah. He's scoring. He's screaming goal, running <laughs> around the house. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, I can only imagine what it's like when he's going to be able to talk and just you know, blobbing around the house. So with, with your genealogy, he's oh. never going to stop. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be hoping for it. So <laughs> yeah, at some point you're going to be like, can we just, can you zip it exactly. for a little bit? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, enjoy the family uh, this summer, TK. Great season. I'm so happy you broke that 30 goal plateau and uh, on to great things next year as well. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it.